So I think what we where we ended last week was we were in a position to actually run updates. So we ran short on time and we didn't want to start without um, having time to fix things if they broke, I think. So let me pull up the Google Doc and I want to share my screen with you guys. So let's see, I have the files, I have the database. I still have to upload those and I saw the thread back and forth on what we're gonna, where we're gonna upload. So I just gotta check on that. Um, off the top of you guys' heads, um, do we make a decision on that yet? Where are we gonna upload the files to? For the moment- Yeah, even just the box. backup. Yeah, for the moment, Dropbox until okay. we have a clear, um, Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put. Hi Ryan. Hi John. Hi Ryan. Welcome. Okay. Um. So Ryan, we want to put you and Rodrigo and Dan in a position to um, document all of our. To organize all of our documentation, to be the keepers of our doc of our documentation for Builder Blocks, I think this will look great on your resumes if you have experience of documenting a a commercial grade application like this. So I'm going to log in, and I think let's just approach trying to do updates. There's going to be two parts to this. One was I think last week I saw that some things weren't compatible with the version of PHP we had on the server. Another component is we have a lot of things to update. So when you're going from, when you're making a big leap um, in updates, sometimes it gets a little bumpy. So let's um, let's just kind of see how this lands. But we have backups we can flip back to if we need to. I also expect the potential of things shifting, like um, in terms of like CSS or structure, because of updating the theme or other things could cause that. One component was that we had the functions.php file that we need to look at. Let me get that folder up. We have the backup, so we do have access to the current one, even when we run the updates. So, okay. All right. So we have um, the files. The functions.php is inside the theme folder. So that's where we were discussing possibly implementing the functions a better way, like a child theme. For now, we'll just paste them back in. And then ultimately, we can rebuild those features without any fancy functions these days. Um, in the back end, when we go to updates, we can, over here, we can verify what things say that won't work. So let's just take a quick look. Okay, compatibility, okay, 100%, 100%. So that's looking good. And then you can update WordPress core. So I don't actually know the best sequence. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Because if you update WordPress and then a plugin breaks the site, then you got to troubleshoot the plugin. But if you update the plugin first and it doesn't break the site, then maybe WordPress won't break when you update it. So we're just kind of going to do it and just see what happens because we have a backup. And that's the benefit of having the backup. Um, so I'm going to try and update WordPress. And here, this is telling us this because that's the version we have now. So I'm going to drop that in our notes. Let's see. Let's see if we have a process backup procedure. 
let's make another procedure. Let me just duplicate this slide. And let's call this update procedure. Great, Brent. So step one will be run backup procedure. <laughs> so it's going to sound kind of funny because it's a little bit like circular, but like basically you could, the same way you do JavaScript and you have like multiple functions and you call functions, you want to build procedures and then you can have almost main procedures that like call the sub procedures and just kind of organize them almost like a menu. I mean, similar to the concept of builder blocks, right? We have modules. Um, so our procedures should be module. It's like, you know, we might want to do a backup and we have no updates to run just to back up um, the database in case we added new blocks. And if we ever get lazy on that and say, we'll just update if somebody tells us to, that's when you run the risk of losing stuff. So we just have like a frequency and a procedure. Here we'll say, we'll reference backup procedure. Plain text, so it doesn't add a giant title. Run backup procedure. Good. Um, so then step two, you know, we're just gonna really start with um, run updates. Um, run updates. And I'm gonna note not particular order. So core files, theme, plugins. Well, in this case, we'll do, th eh, still kind of hard to say we should be. And then three will be uh, re-implement um, functions, custom functions inside the theme. And then um, lastly, implement run updates on particular order. Let's specify here. Let's run updates, test after each update. Note changes Let's proceed as um making progress we'll find a more elegant way to phrase that but like in an experiment like scientific method right you have a control you have a variable you don't make 20 variables that you modify at the exact same time because then when you go to say what caused something, you get confused, right? And you have to redo the whole experiment. So the same kind of goes for this. It's almost like we're experimenting to see what works. That's going to sound terrible. And that's from a professional standpoint um, because we haven't maintained the updates over time. We're just going to kind of run an update, look at the site. If it doesn't break, great. If it breaks a little bit, we should note it. Um, a good call out is if the site does break, we shouldn't just stop the update procedure because one thing might break when we update, but then when we update something else, it might be fixed. So like the latest version of the theme and plugins may be better with the latest version of WordPress, but like the old version might not be as compatible for some reason. And, you know, so we'll just kind of monitor the changes as we go. Uh, so let's do the scary part. Let's start with the core file. You know, everything says it's compatible. This one doesn't specify. But yeah. Let's see. This part always scares me. Um, hey, okay. So good news. We're still in the back end of WordPress. There's no critical error screen. This is a good sign. So if the site broke, it would probably have been a white screen that says your site is experiencing something, you know, um, please troubleshoot or some some message. Nothing's broken the back end. But we got to check the front end. I see some stuff immediately. This looks like it got squished to the left. But that's not that bad. I really like the logical way you think about... Um... 
uh, up, updating Brent. Thank you for being so clear and this in this. Oh, yeah, definitely. Today. Yeah, I mean the the truth is knowledge gets you so far, but experience gets you the rest of the way. Yeah. So if you've never gone through the mistakes, you won't instinctually know which direction to go. And then you can also overthink things like my nature is to think too much. So when I say, let's just get, see what happens. It's because I know there's not a better way. I thought through this, if something's going to break, it's going to break. And then we can note it, roll back. Um, and ideally when this is like out in public domain, more aggressively, we'll have a staging server and there'll be no pressure. Mm -hmm. All right. So from here. Let's make a note. So I'll just, for now, I'll put it here, but we should not have this in the procedures. Um, but let's search bar. Uh, full width. I'm going to specify things to fix also, so we remember that. Um, so that's really not that bad. I'm kind of optimistic right now. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Okay, so core is done. Plugins. Okay, I don't even know if we have this activated, um, but, but this is a good one to prevent spam. But the, the one of the tricks with WordPress in a lot of different applications is if you're not using a plugin and you deactivate it, but you think you might need it later, ideally you should not have it on the server because it's a vulnerability, right? It's an extra thing that somebody could exploit. I mean, even if everything is well-maintained, eventually something gets hacked. So the more things you have to maintain, the higher, you know, you're basically rolling a dice. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna increase, but like statistically, like each one would probably there's a chance that eventually something will be exploited. And the more things you have, it's just like you're, you know, it's playing with fire. Just leave unupdated things. I guess is a short way to say that. So you should remove anything you're not using um, or maintain it and update it at minimum. So that's something we can do later. But for now, you know, let's just run these updates. This one tells us we have to update PHP. This one says we need to update PHP. Uh, this one as well. So what this tells me is as we run these updates, let's update all the ones that doesn't need a PHP update, test the site, and then we'll go to the server and update the PHP version. Uh, because updating this would break the site. That's, you know, they're giving us a warning message. So let's see, compatibility is good. This one's good. That one's good. Good. All right, so I'm going to update these plugins. Now, I know I said we should do one at a time, and I'm kind of breaking my own rule here. The reason I'm doing that is it says it should be okay. Like, in here's how I'm looking at this. This is not a front-end item. This is the meta slider. If the slider's messed up, we can, you know, understand it's probably this. This is a back-end item. This is a back-end item to duplicate the blocks. So it's really just the carousel and the meta slider that are front-facing things we're updating right now. So they're not supposed to break the site because they say they're compatible. We should somewhat trust that. Else, it's the balance. Like with the checklist, if the checklist is too complicated, you don't use it. If it's not complicated enough, you don't actually, you know, it doesn't work. So we could spend a lot of time doing one at a time when it says it's going to work. And then that's just redundant because the author did the work for us. So we're just going to piggyback off their knowledge, right? So that's kind of how I'm, you know, thinking of that one. So update plugins. Hopefully it's good. And then we'll check the front end again. Okay, when you see a bunch of green things, that's good. <laughs> um, it means it worked. And then it says it's complete and we're still in the dashboard. That's, again, a good sign. Let's refresh. 
I would also caution you to make sure you're not on a cached copy of the site. You can go to like network, disable cache and refresh. Um, looks good. I mean, see the carousels. If I'm not mistaken, I think it, I don't know if we redid it with a plugin. I remember at one point we did a custom coded thing. I think Ari, if I'm not mistaken, you played part in that, right? Back in the day with like Rodrigo and yeah, I think we we made that custom one first before turning to the plugin. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. So I think this is another working. thing that it's different now it's that the arrows are now like with a black box. I think uh, they weren't. Yes. Good. So something with the style. So we'll make a note. Good catch. Great catch. Yeah. Good catch. This is a really valuable lesson in my in my opinion on practical engineering. Um, when I got out of school, I had no idea how to really build something in the real world. Um, this is how you build things in the real world. And um, one other trick uh, to keep a uh, funny one for you guys. I don't spell that great. So whenever I try and spike, spell carousel, I always mess it up. So those slideshows inaccurate. If you're sharing your screen with someone you're presenting to, you know, um, I just pivoted and used something close enough that I'll remember. That's not misspelled. So I don't know if any of you guys ever have that happen to you, and you're like, oh. Uh, <laughs> but that's um that's my trick. I just use a word that's similar. <laughs> um, all right. So that's good. Um, last thing is the theme. Now the theme controls like the general page templates, but Gutenberg and the plugins we're using control the content section. So my expectation for the theme would primarily be like the header, the width of the page, and some of those type of settings could get messed up here. Um, but I don't think the page content will get messed up or, you know, maybe font sizes or something. So let's run this last one. Then we'll go deal with the PHP issue circle back around and we'll update the last plugins. Now, for me, when I do stuff like this, I will often run backups periodically. Um, one suggestion, um, when we get to a further point, there's a, a WordPress hosting company called WP Engine I use at Market Vantage. They give you development stage and, and production with daily backups. They even have extensions where they'll run your updates for you and compare screenshots of your front end. And if they'll compare all your pages to the way it looked prior to the updates. And if it notes a visual change, then it um it will um roll back and message you. Ah. So there's some like for specifically WordPress applications, there's some better managed solutions that set things up. So like right now with everything working, I'd be like, okay, this is a good point to do a checkpoint. With doing it manually, I'm not gonna bother, but because I'd rather just try to roll a piece back, you know, manually. But in general, when you have a tool like that, you just click a button, wait two minutes, and you're good to keep moving. And then you can just do checkpoints as you do the process. Uh, that's for later, not for now. All right, so let's see. Aston, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I'm like playing a boss battle with like um one health left every time I go to run an update. I'm just like, okay, let's see if we make it through this time. <laughs> um, so, update theme. Now, remember, we have functions. We got to paste back in. So something should break. I mean, I think the search function is one of the things. So, okay, navigation did mess up. The bar is somewhat fixed, which is kind of comical that it unbroke. Um, this feels, oh, I know we usually keep it narrow. We can double check that 750. Um, okay, so up here is messed up. Now, one thing that I probably should have done that I should have called out, um, if you don't remember how something looks before you run updates, taking a screenshot is probably a really good idea. Um, but generally we know how building yourself is going to look. We can just take the font size off the main site. We keep things consistent. 
so that was kind of a slip up on my end. We should have taken a capture of how it looked before updating. So let's add that to the procedure for the future. Okay, so generally things aren't that bad. This is pretty good. I mean, this is very minimal. This was like really best case scenario with um, that amount of updates. So we're in a really good spot. I'm gonna go into the functions, grab the last ones we had. Yeah. Search, that's us. Header. Insert search on every page. Display, excerpt, build it. That's also us. Load depreciated functions, I think, is native to the theme. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. And I see Beaver Builder, which is like they, Gutenberg is the default on WordPress built in before WordPress implemented Gutenberg Page Builder. Other companies thrived off of offering drag and drop interfaces that are now like I think they're doomed to be completely honest um, in the long run, but they have some special features with like animations and other things transition. So they do have a place in the market right now. But as WordPress gets better and better, it's going to be hard to justify paying for something that is native. So I am I follow that, and I'm curious how that plays out in the long run. But let's go to, well, let's actually click on a few things. These already say build it. So I wonder if that function was from our rebuild, and maybe is even not needed. Um, button, button changed. Button turned around. We got that. Search page looks pretty terrible. But that I think the excerpt is um something I did see in the functions. So let's put the functions in and test that page again. Theme file. I think it's at the top, like the second one. Ah, okay, yeah, because it's like the most important. Thank you. Thank you. I was impatient and I just clicked. Okay, I'm still on it. Good. Because I um I kept clicking, waiting for it to load. All right, now that's thank you guys. All right, Beaver Builder. These are the last three lines of the other code I saw that we copied from after. And I'm gonna put I honestly um, was up late last night, <laughs> so thank you guys for catching me there. In general, on a few things here. Okay, yeah. so we got this in here. Yeah. So now we'll update, and I put a better code. Let's actually put a date, just so it stands out while well I'm. Oh. 
and I'm I'm putting in something redundant just in case we search build it yourself BIB DIY like something that we might think to search in the code. I'm almost kind of making it indexable for us to just find quickly. Okay, so let's update. Okay, success. Ah, that's looking better. And then the search bar broke again, but okay. Now that says read more and that says build it. So we have a duplicate um, call to action. And from here, let's just cycle back around. Make sure we have search on every page. We, I see search being maintained. These pages look good. That's an easy fix. Generally okay. Then when we search, text looks a little big there too. So let's make a comment on that. Um, All right, so let's attack this list now. Um, let's start with the navigation. So to fix that, we'll go to customize. So also let's just take a quick look. These we always had. So I, as I mentioned, should have taken the picture, but um, it looks like the build it blocks text is huge and these look bigger. I think we just have to tighten everything up so it's a single line, is that correct? I mean, you guys remember? I think I have a screenshot. Let me check. Oh, perfect. And we do have custom CSS over here. So while Dan's looking for that, and just interrupt me when you find it. I'm just looking to see. My guess is a class with a search box or something changed. I just had a, a principal from Sun School pop up as a text. It's just one of those generic um, message graphs. Yeah. Search input, display none. So there is some stuff in here for search. I'm going to duplicate this and then just. The reason I'm doing that is I just don't like the sidebar here. And then I open up another menu and it just makes the site too small. Uh, that's just preference, but you can do this in that window as well. Uh, input type search. Let's see if. This full width being overwritten. It's max width is unset. Let's see. Okay. So, I mean, that's going to be a really easy fix. We just got to maybe calculate the difference of the button or something, or maybe the wrapper. Form. Okay. So, let me undo that. It's probably the form. Form is full with. We have the button. Then we have this. So on mobile, it seems fun for that. And we got to check mobile as well. Since we have mobile still with enabled. Been with here. It looks like it's display flex or flex. 
you know, the CSS stuff best. There's probably a way to make it fill the distance or something. I don't do enough flex to be completely transparent. But I do see that here. Um, I've got a screenshot of the module carousel and of the module, but there's no search bar, nor like the, uh, a, a nah, screenshot nah. of the main main page. Gotcha. I can, I can see the search bar. I right, do you want to share for a moment? Let's let's check it out. Thanks for remembering and pulling it up. For sure. Um, I'll try to. Maybe I can access in my computer to WordPress. I don't know if it will be updated already, but I can try and check if by any um, chance it, it isn't will probably updated. Be, it will probably already be updated on your side unless it's cached. I mean, you can try for sure. Um, Oh. And again, like if we need to, like we have a backup, so we can even implement it locally or something and look at it. Here's how it looked. This will, this images. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I overall the sliders look pretty okay. Yeah. Oh, so I think this it's from the main page. Oh, here it is. Look, we can like. Oh, nice. Oh, so we had it on a cross. We didn't display the site logo. That's probably why uh -huh. the update of the theme. And we probably just have the build it yourself logo at the top, right? Yeah, there was no logo. Okay, that should be easy to fix. Thank you. Yep. Great, Ben. <clears throat> Okay, so there's a place you can just uncheck this in lines. There should be a way to shut this off through here and not like at the site tag. Okay, visibility. I think that's okay. So that's already a big start. Oh, get that. Now, let's just do a test publish. That. Okay, that's looking better. Granted, home should be here and they should be justified along with even spacing, something to that effect. But, um, and then the color, the color was black, right? Or the, the dark. Gray. Yeah, I think. Okay, so we can fix that. This should go all the way across. I'm the reason I'm hesitating on this is I know it's flex and I gotta look at the rules for flex, but I think there's a way to make it just grow and not do a I don't think we have to do like a kajillion media queries for different display sizes. I'm pretty sure there's a way we can um, get that to grow automatically. Um and the other thing is maybe there's a way to I know there's some calculation functions where you can subtract a pixel amount. If the button has a set pixel amount, maybe we have a media query that just says 100% minus the button width for a certain you know screen size until the button changes. So I think this button holds steady. Right now it's 103. Now it's 111. 
So it looks like on anything where it's larger, it stays at 111. Then when it shrinks to mobile, the button changes to 103. It seems like it holds there for tablet size. So when I say mobile, this is tablet technically. Um, so it looks like it stays at 103. And then once we hit complete mobile, it actually seems like it fixes. So maybe we can take the code from here. <laughs> Whatever CSS is applied on this. Let's see, flex grow one. It's not grayed out, max width 100. I want to try to hit the easier things first, but generally speaking, we can come here, look at what's computed. I noticed this is visible in prior, like when we're on a larger size, it's kind of grayed out, like there's some other rule that is over right and down lower, but it's not crossed out. So I think it's the same rule. Um, we can figure that out. Oh, and this is a little peculiar. All right, let's fix the color. That should be really easy. So we want it, that we might be able to do it here. So the reason I, you want to keep it as native as possible. If the theme supports like different options, you should try to change it in the menu before you start doing a hackier solution. Um, just for simplicity, but when you need to, then you go and you can modify it via custom CSS or JavaScript as needed. So menu font, menu color, link text, normal. Let's just see. We can make sure it's the exact. Let's go to build it yourself and look at what we're using for links. It's saying we're using gray. It's just like literally gray. Let's just see. 128. Then I think the next one's hover. What do we do for hover? It's like blue would be the hover and red would be active. So I mean, I mean, we're just we'll just take the cue from the regular build it yourself site. Great, Brent. You know there's a way to actually see when it's on a cover. There we go. Okay, you can right click and force state. There it is. Force state hover. Then we can grab that color. And the last one's fight active. Let's just see. Active. All right. So this. Okay, so it's just max red, it looks like, 255 on red. All right, let's see how that translates. Fantastic. Now let's try to fix the alignment. Basin. 
It shouldn't be in here. I'm just looking to see. There's like something I'm missing. I'm looking for something like justification, left, right, justify. And I'm not seeing it. That doesn't mean it's not there. It just means I'm missing it. It might be in the header itself. <laughs> header builder. <laughs> not sure that's doing anything better. Um, full width looks like it's better because it's the full width of a container, but it's not centered. So I think if we do that, as weird as that is, that might make it stretch the correct, and then maybe we just have to realign it. Like, let's, let's just check it out. And as painful as this might seem, it could have been way worse with um, <laughs> the and updates and stuff. So, mm. it's still showing. What is this? Like it looks like there's a second box that looks like it's pushing it over. This one is site header section left, which is probably the brand stuff that's not shown. Like tag, yeah, title tagline and stuff. So it's hold an empty space. So let's just see if we do display none on this. <clears throat> Does the spacing on the text seem okay? Like centered and like that's kind of how we did it before, right? It looks great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna assume this one. Let's see. Light header primary section left. Let's um uh, make that go away. Um this is where we get a little hacky. Let me just take one quick look. No widgets, header builder, header types. It looks like there's not, they're pushing their paid stuff nowadays more aggressively. So that's fine. Um, we're just going to go and drop this in a line of CSS. And we're good. Um, the reason I did it at the top, you know, it's not really going to make that much of an impact, but anything that's like navigational, my gut tells me I stick it at the top of my CSS and things that are not navigational or in the header, I drop a lower down. Um, now, if you want to get really fancy, you actually want to split up your CSS to like critical CSS and non-critical. Then you can make your applications load faster by placing certain CSS first and you optimize the page interactiveness doesn't really affect page speed, but time to interaction improves and that helps people enjoy your app. Reduces like, you know, just lag kind of. So we got that. Uh -huh. Let's see. Let's do a, there was that extra. Oh, I know why, search. Let's just do rocket again. So the read more link, and then we have build it. We use the carousels elsewhere. See, this is one of the things that when we do migrate to the latest like Gutenberg builder, you can actually craft your own search page um, using the Gutenberg block builder versus needing to edit code, which is nice. But it's also something we don't need to deal with right now. So let's just see how we can grab these. My concern is it's probably the exact same class as this. Build it and read more. Let's 
see if there's okay so good news there's actually a specific read more container so now over here that's not in a read more <coughs> Oh, and then up here, rocket launcher, and then rocket launcher titles twice. Wait, something is definitely going on there. Let's fix it for now and remember to come back to like investigate that more aggressively. But for now, if we can get it working, that's good. So let's just say display. No. Hmm. I can see that. Okay, I'll try. Okay, important. Get rid of it. I still see build it. That's good news. I'm going to go to the home page. And this is in the custom. So I'm just making sure we didn't lose anything else. We have regular text sizes for these. If I go to view all, these text sizes are also small. So what we should really be doing, this should go away. I think this big text should go away. And then we need to maybe reverse the, no, we just need to add a button style to build it, which I know we're buttoned up on the end of the hour. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna do this the quickest way with the idea that we should come back and revisit it, but it's not really gonna make an impactful difference right now. So we'll just do it the quick way. Um, H2. Entry title. So H2 entry title. We'll select this. Um, another trick is if you want to select something, you can just right click and do copy CSS selector. Um, sometimes it gets too specific, um, but it does give you a good um, quick way to grab things. See, yeah, this is like very hyper specific. I don't like that. Um, it's good if you're trying to isolate, like say you have 20 things on a page that are all the same and you need like the nth number or something or something weird, like things like that come into play there. Not right now, what we're doing. I also want to isolate this to the search page. So we're going to do H2 with the class entry title. Well, let's do display done. Okay, that's looking better. We can merge these after, um, but I just want to make sure we're working. Now, body should have search, class search results. So body dot search results. That will limit it just to this page, like the search pages, because I don't want this class applying to everything in case it's another H2 entry title we're not aware of. So we'll do body, class, search results, H2 entry title, disclaimer. For now, I'll just leave them separate. I just want to try to hit as many points as we can to get it looking the way it should, in case we need to show it off or use it. Um, yeah, I mean, think of the logic, right? Like, so my brother, this is a good story for you guys. Like, I have some suit jackets, and if I go somewhere, sometimes I'll throw them on. And my brother doesn't understand if I'm not going to a meeting, why do I put on a suit jacket and a dress shirt? They'll look at me funny and just really not grasp it. You know, for me, it's like, what if I'm in a library, at a cafe, someone strikes up a conversation about something with marketing or their website. Am I helping my case if I am in like a hoodie and, you know, not presentable? It's like presenting your ideas, right? So for me, when I look at this, I'm like, okay, the less broke this looks, what if John has an opportunity to show this to somebody? He pulls it up. And they see some funny fonts and that distracts from the functionality of the program, right? So we don't want that. We want this to just, John shows it, takes people's money, and then we build more stuff. It's kind of, um, would you say that's fair? Thanks for yeah. thinking about the big picture. <clears throat> uh, the yeah. Big picture in particular. No mm -hmm. All practical things that you rarely learn in school. <clears throat> I particularly like the way you label your code. Brent's code. Oh, I got to read. Most of this is WordPress. Uh, 
That's why I like WordPress. It does all the work for me. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. Back. Okay, I'm not on the right thing. Read more. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay, I'm finding one that's not scrolling because the other ones kept leaving me every time I'm trying to like look at the class. <laughs> and, all right, so I'm on the A. Pollard says it's this is not the right one. And that throws me off a bit. So maybe it's higher up. Peculiar. I'm, I know there's a color that should be the background, but it's saying the background's white. So I, I am. Oh, I remember this. Okay. We did a pseudo element to overwrite the read more to say build it. So we didn't have to like do anything. Like it's. So this after has the background color. See that, guys? So it still says read more, but we did an after and we threw a fake div on top of the other div. So there we are. This is the code we want. And we can just apply this to the search, the button on the other side. Okay, that was throwing me off. Um, that was funny. Let's block it. Let's take this, inspect it, build it, rocket launcher. Okay, so a challenge, right? This is a good example. This is where we're gonna need to select the second A link inside of this. So in, um, let's see, I am going to copy this whole thing, copy element. I'm gonna go to, chat GPT and then uh, great. try and be as lazy as possible with my prompt and okay that's the class Select the A and so that should work. Let's give that a shot. Great example of using Chat GPT to edit code. It makes life very easy. When it works well. <laughs> oh, let's see. So, oh, I need to do after. Sometimes it looks good, but then it's not good. So here's the thing. I don't think we actually need to do the content thing of the pseudo. I think we can just do background. Let's see if this is selecting the right thing. It's not. There we go. That's why. Okay. So first, let's see. Zero, one, two. One. Okay, that's funny. So we're almost there. Let me go back to having the pseudo stuff. Put one and see. Okay, so that is applying. Let's see what it did. It gave me nth child. Let's do nth of type. These are some of the CSS rules I always got to like look up, but this might be better in this scenario. So we'll test that. Let's make sure it's grabbing the right thing. So Astro Container is the class. Okay. 
We just want the second one. Oops. Pop size back at like Sometimes it's a back and forth with the AI. And also, when you don't need the right question to ask, uh, that also makes it harder for it. But now let's, I'm going to pose it in my code and say, I use this. It's All right, and I think we're, you have another webcast starting, right? Yes, we do. Um, okay. <clears throat> hey, there we go. That one worked. <clears throat> Good enough, right? Good enough now. We got it there. Um, at the very least, if somebody comes to build it yourself, build a blocks right now, it's mostly functional. We do have a to-do list to get it working back where it should be. Um, I'm not sure what this extra button is for. They don't all have that, but I think um, the next steps, we just work down that list, fix up any little errors we see. And then by next weekend, we'll be at a spot where we can start implementing the new edits. Does that sound good? Fantastic, yeah. Brent. Guys, thanks for joining. Um, Thank you. Most valuable, most valuable. All right, I hope this is okay for you. Yeah, yeah. Great, I hope you find it useful. All right, Rodrigo, Ryan, um, hang in there. It's just a matter of being exposed to this. Um, and um, I think you'll see the value of it down the road. All right, guys, have a good week. See you next week.